We're going to cut this out. <laughs> <laughs> hey everyone, my name is Elisa and welcome back to my channel. I'm excited today to welcome a special guest, my great friend, Tram. She was also my former college roommate. She loves food just as much as I do. Hello. So I thought today would be a great day to check out some new local spots. Yes, definitely. Spots that we have not tried yet. Nope. Um, so we've got four places that we're going to hit up today. We are right now we are in Lincoln Square um, and we're going to pick up a nice cup of coffee yes. and maybe some pastries, pastries here at the uh, Aroma Cafe to get started. So uh, let's check it out. Let's go. Ooh, lattes, gluten free bites. Okay, so we just ordered two signature espresso drinks. The one that I got was a pistachio rose latte. They make their pistachio milk in-house. So I'm really excited to try this. This, this is a completely new drink. I haven't tried anything like this before. So what did you get? I got the hazelnut horchata. Let's see if it's latte. pretty too. Yeah, let's see. Really excited. Ooh, look at this. All right. okay. Fancy. Little green tint with the pistachio. I don't know what that mm. is. Smells, I can smell the cinnamon here. Is that the rose on top? Yeah, there's like sprinkles of rose. So interesting. This is a really cute place with Turkish influences too. Yeah, Turkish in coffee is their Turkish. thing. And Indian influences too? Yeah, Indian, Turkish. I love it. All right, I'm going in. Okay. Mmm. Oh, I like this. Um, this is interesting because I like a lot of plant-based milk, but I've never had pistachio milk. Um, and I like that it's not too sweet. So a lot of times, oftentimes when you go to like coffee shops, their signature drinks, I feel like, are on the sweeter side because they try to like put a lot of syrup, different types of syrup in. But this is really, this is really nice and subtle. How about yours? Mine, mine is good because I usually don't like dairy in my latte. So if you don't like dairy, this is the perfect kind of latte for you because it has um, hazelnut milk, rice milk. Oh, it has three different types of milk, right? Yes, and coconut milk. So it's perfect for me because I don't like dairy at all. So yeah, and then we picked up a couple like just small little bites. Um, they have a bunch of different pastries, but here we've got the black baklava, and then I got a little mound of this um, oatmeal raisin. Baklava is a little bit sweet for me, so we'll see how... Yeah, you know with COVID, you're just going to eat that one and I'm going to eat this one. <laughs> but we're not going to be sharing this right now because I just put my... <laughs> we just put our fingers all over it. Okay. Oh, okay. That was yours. Delicious. It has peanut butter in it. Oh, mm. I thought it was gonna be like super like crunchy, but it's actually nice and chewy. It has a little um, hints of salt in there too. So again, not too sweet. I love it. And it's not raisin. It's chocolate in there. It's really good. How about yours? Yeah, um, I'm. I'm pleasantly surprised because this is actually not too sweet at all. Normally baklava, very, very sweet. Mm -hmm. This one is just the right amount of sweetness, I think, with the little pistachio hints. Mm. Really good. Love it. Yeah. It looks really fresh, too. Like, I know. When we ordered it up there, they just brought a whole like, new tray, so it was brand new. We got the first piece. Highly recommend. I'm surprised I haven't hit this spot before, but it was definitely, if you're in the Lincoln Square area, I, I really like it. Highly recommend. I love it. Such a cute spot. Yeah, thumbs up for me. Thumbs up. Mm -hmm. Cheers. Cheers. All right, so we hit the first spot. The second spot here, we are in like with the Ravenswood area yeah. and we are at a place called ATX Bodega. They are supposed to be known for Austin, Texas style barbecue. Okay. I looked at their menu and they also had some really good looking tacos on there. So That'd yeah. be interesting, tacos and barbecue? Tacos and barbecue. Okay. I mean, I've never been to Austin, so I really can't compare it to Austin, Texas barbecue, but we'll just see if it's tasty or not. Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> We 
we got 50-50 brisket to try and instead of barbecue, he recommended a chimichurri and some pickled onions. But really first, we should just try it straight yes. without anything. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh my, my god. god. Oh it's so God. tender. So juicy. Mm. So flavorful, even without any you really barbecue. Don't yeah, you don't need anything. Going in what? with the Jimmy Cherry dip. Oh my God. The Please. Jimmy Cherry's on point. Right? No, mm. so good. Fire. Oh, fire. Really good. How's how's the meat, the fat content? The, the meat? meat is perfection. Uh huh. So juicy. So juicy. I love the, the fat. 50 50, yeah. Mm. So and good. I, yeah, I gave you 50 50. It was. Mm hmm. All right, I'm going to try it with um, the pickled. I'm going to mm -hmm. do a little pickled onion. Mmm. Mm. Good. I like that. The acid. The acid helps. Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm gonna do chimichurri. Yeah. I'm gonna do a combo. And pickle onion. Mmm. Mm hmm. It needed that little acid mm -hmm. combined with the sauce. This is better than barbecue sauce. Mm hmm. Thank you. Mm hmm. I think this is uh, might be my new way of eating brisket there. How long do you smoke the brisket for? 12 hours. 12 hours. And that's. Very Texas thing. Is yeah. I'm from Chicago. How'd you learn about like Texas barbecue then? I moved to Texas with my wife from Corpus Christi. Okay. And being a Chicagoan, I wasn't feeling Texas except for Boston. Yeah. So we went to Central Texas about six years ago. And because of COVID, we ended up having to come back. Okay. Yeah. So this is me making lemonade. I've never done the industry. I've never done anything really? having to do with the restaurant industry. Okay. This was just something that I enjoyed eating at the food trucks. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed the simplicity of the barbecue. Mm -hmm. It's religion in Texas. The brisket done this way. You don't put sauce because you're not hiding anything. And yeah. The hide, right? Yeah. And me being Latino, I noticed that everyone always does it with a, you know, chopped beef. Chop brisket, putting like, barbecue sauce. And maybe like, you know, I, I eat for tortillas and avocado. Yeah. So I'm like, this is a cultural thing. In Texas, they embrace it. Mm -hmm. And so I saw something a little different than what we actually It is, do yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, our, our, we've gotten a big, big kind of following because the neighborhood is a very toxic neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And we get a lot of diversity because a lot of the flavors we're using are very similar to the cultures that smoking flavor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like mommy is a smoke flavor. Right. Right, so yep. a mojo is a smoke flavor. Yeah, yeah. So that, that's that's what we're trying to do, is show those more culture that, that, that comes with the with the barbecue, the smoking app. Okay. Yeah, no, this is amazing. Yeah, it's so good. good. Yeah, the two combined together. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Exactly. It, it, it's a fun, and so my ode to Valentina in, in Austin, who makes hell of a good uh, brisket taco. This does it very simple. And that's what we want to show. You can do it with tortillas. You can mm -hmm. have a flour or a, a regular tortilla. Mm -hmm. But that's the simplicity of it. Yeah, because you mm -hmm. want to showcase the meat and the just the flavors of it Absolutely. without mm -hmm. any extra. You don't need the extras to cover it up. Yeah. Right. Hence, hence the little saying, right? Yeah. yeah. You know, I'm not hiding anything. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, that's kind of what we're trying to do. And, and that's what I saw at Austin, Texas. OK. That's awesome. No, I'm glad you enjoy it. Yeah, yeah it's, it's really, really good. Really, Thank you. Really good. Oh, for sure. Oh. Ooh. How long have you guys been open? November 20th of last year. Oh, wow. We started right in the middle of the pandemic. Oh, wow. We planned it. Wow. Because you know people were going to be home. They were going to order a lot of yeah. food. <laughs> Perfect. Right. Okay. Let us give you the consumer as well. Okay. And I'm going to give you some feedback. Oh. oh. That's uh. Not that it's. You can do how you like, but the red is going to be 
the spice, right? Okay. Put that in the consomme. Okay. Depending how you like your consomme, but if you want a little bit more traditional flavor, mm -hmm. put it in there, mix it in, and that's what you're gonna dunk that. Ooh, Ooh okay. Yum, okay. Yum, yum. And here's some spoons. I've never yeah. had this uh, Iberia type of Ooh. tacos before. Yeah, I'm excited. excited. Enjoy. Thank you Thank so you. much. Here we have the birria tacos, and this is the consomme that you're gonna dip the birria tacos mm -hmm. in. Um, the owner had recommended that we put the red sauce into this one if we want a little bit more kick. I love my stuff with a kick. I so don't know how sp spicy this is, so. Let's taste it a little bit. It's got a kick. Okay. So maybe not as much. Did he say uh, the salsa verde too, or just this? Just this if we want it spicier. Okay. Let's so see. we're gonna do the red. Look at how pretty. Oh my this gosh. Is. You guys, I'm gonna be full after this. Me too. <laughs> and this is this deep fried tortilla? This looks like it's deep fried this, tortilla. This looks amazing. Oh my gosh. Mm. Mm hmm Mm-hmm. So good. I like the crunchiness of the tortilla. So good. So good. Yeah, excellent. How's the crunch? The crunch I like is the crunch. so good. It gives it that uh, extra texture. Extra texture. Mm-hmm. If you get that, you can use it to put it on your fat, put it on your flat top. Mm-hmm. Oh, so good. That's the flavor you're getting. Uh-huh. Oh, okay. I wonder. It's not just like, Fried and like regular. So it's not like just deep fried. You like put it on with like the juices oh, yeah. of the meat. That makes sense. Oh, oh it's so good. And like flavors on like for all sure. fronts. For sure. Mm. No, no, no. Oh yeah, it's good stuff. Mmm. Everything okay though right now, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank Perfect. you so much. This is this is um this is not clean eats, you guys. Uh huh. You're, when you're eating here. You gotta you're, go in and dig with your you hand. You just gotta go in. You're gonna have stuff dripping on your chin. Uh huh. She just did. Yeah. I feel like this is like a good fusion of the juice, though. Like, mm -hmm. so good. Mm hmm. Have you ever had a birria taco? That's my first time. Yeah, me too. I kind of like. I think I've done this half, and I do want to eat the whole thing, but I also want to try that. I know. So I'm gonna take a break. I'm gonna put my side on over here. Okay. Well, if you don't mind, I might we'll come do back. That. Um, and then let's dig into the bun mi. This is this is a bun mi taco. So I've got high expectations because I eat bun mi's all the time. So let's see. Uh, it's very pretty. Cheers. <laughs> it's gonna be a messy one. Uh -huh. Mmm. Mmm. That's good. Very fusion. It is very fusion. The, um, is this beef? This is beef. The meat has like a sweet, kind of a little sweet sauce. But then like when you pair it up with like the fresh, like the radish, the pickled onions, the cabbage, the cilantro, the avocado. Yeah, so it has the, the jalapeno, traditional Bun mi notes with the cilantro, mm -hmm. but, the jalapeno. So like, like if bun mi was a barbecue. Yes. Like elevated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love this. Mm -hmm. So good. And you know I'm Vietnamese, She's so Vietnamese. I've got oh. high expectations. <laughs> <laughs> I just gave you the sesame seeds. Mm -hmm. Love the this. owner is so nice to you guys. Like, he, you, you could tell he's like really passionate about Super his. Super passionate about his food. Mm -hmm. And the fact that he had no experience mm -hmm. in the restaurant industry. Yeah. He just thought she was so uh -huh. It's pretty amazing. Mm. Oh my gosh. <laughs> it's so good. Um, which one is your favorite so far? Believe it or not, I actually like this, this one. This one, right? Mm -hmm. That one was really good, but... Um, that one is like really good if you just want something real rich, right? Uh-huh. Um, but there's something about this where you can 
it's just the, lots of different flavors that burst in your mouth. Yeah. And it's lighter. It seems a little bit lighter. Mm -hmm. Don't take me wrong. They're both great. Yes. It's fabulous. But in a different... Totally different. Yes. Like, like I think that one is more, you know, traditional, mm -hmm. very, uh, like um, smoked. Smoke, you're going to yes. get that smokiness. But if you want something a little bit different mm -hmm. that marries a lot, like two, two different cultures, um, yeah. it's done really well. You did it really well. Mm -hmm. So good. Oh my gosh. This place opened up a year ago mm -hmm. during the pandemic. I'm really glad I found this. I know. I'm glad you found it for me. Mm -hmm. I would never have like even come to try it because it's so it's like on the corner, mm -hmm. not the script, but it's a definitely great a local uh, spot that's different. You're not going to find this in Chicago. You're going to find a lot of you're, you're going to find quite a few different smoked barbecue places, but this one is like I think it's special. It's quaint. It's in the neighborhood. Um, they put a lot of love and care into yeah. their food. You could tell the owner's super passionate yes. um, about how he cooks and how he really is transparent about his meat and the quality of his meat, not like putting so many things on the briskets particularly. Yeah. Like, just try it how it is because good meat is gonna taste good without mm -hmm. a lot of the different things on there, right? Yes. Now, once you add a few more things, of course it's gonna elevate it, but if it's really good on its own, you could tell, like, yeah, I think uh, once we had the brisket and it was so good on its own, mm -hmm. I knew the other tacos would have yeah amazing sure. just because the flavor of the meat on itself was like outstanding. Yeah, small little spot right at the corner. Um, highly recommend. Yes, I'm definitely gonna tell my mom, my sister. They live around the corner. Yeah, so. look at this. Can I just see the juiciness of this? Like, come on. Mm -hmm. Oh. I was gonna try not to eat this whole thing. Though. I know. <laughs> Let's be real. I'm gonna get a little big. <laughs> totally. Like, no, I thought it wasn't that hungry, but no, you know. I'm gonna save my stomach for the next place. No, I'm gonna eat the whole thing. Mm -hmm. Thumbs up. Check mm -hmm. this place out. Mm -hmm. Legit. Yes. Double thumbs up. Mm -hmm. <laughs>
Singaporean style Hainanese chicken. If you're Thai, this is like our version of what we call khao man gai. Um, the rice is cooked in like chicken fat too, so it's not just your regular white rice. And it comes with a side of chicken broth, condiments too. So you want it? Yeah. So why don't you take some? never had this type of chicken before. Really aromatic too. Mm -hmm. Get some cucumbers. Mm -hmm. And the, you get the ginger smell. The chicken. This is, do we like just mix it all? Yep, you'll pour this a little on top. You'll do a little bit of each. I will have you do the taste testing first. Let's see. Mm. Is it good? Mm -hmm. So this soy sauce is pretty thick. It's a little bit like. Is that like a dark soy sauce? Yeah, it's like it's a darker, a little bit sweeter. But we'll see. I haven't tried this one, but it looks like it would be sweeter. Mmm. Mm -hmm. This is really authentic, actually. Is it? Mmm. -hmm. Yeah, like the chicken is really tender. It's very comforting. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely get notes of it. it's like garlicky on um, gingery, gingery, garlicky, and um, the chicken is like the star here. It's like you definitely get a lot of chicken flavor because the chicken, the chicken fat that's like infused into the rice plus like the the actual chicken itself. It's like a um, comforting home cooked meal, you know. And that's what reminds me of because my mom used to make this. <laughs> that never uh, uh. <laughs> Just your know, classic Asian like home cooked style comfort comfort like chicken and rice plate. And not many places offer it in the city, so this is solid. So this is definitely authentic. You've got your beef brisket. You've got your uh, the meat. You've got the beef uh, meatballs. We have the main uh, meat stuff in the fur. Broth is pretty clear, which is good. Normally, uh, you want to get a clear broth. That's a sign of uh, a flavorful. So that's like a star, right? Yes. Right. Got the garnishment, the bean sprouts. Got the Thai basil leaves. I refuse to eat my pho without all these garnishments because it's not pho. Then it's not pho to me. Yeah. Yes, and we got the lime here. So this is the raisin sauce. I never know if people like are supposed to put it in there. Or um, like some people it. like uh, just the broth by itself because then you really taste the flavor of the broth. Mm -hmm. But I don't know, to me, I'm so used to like the hoisin sauce and the sriracha sauce together that like it's not fun to me if I don't have all of my ingredients. Like I refuse to do this. All right, well then I gotta put it all in there. Yes. But let me taste the broth before I uh, mix it. Okay. It's definitely um, the star anise. So the star anise makes the pho flavoring, so you can definitely taste that. I could taste that, yeah. Mm hmm. Mm. I like that the noodles are not um, the noodles too mushy. are actually like really good. They it's have a nice yum. balance to them. Mm -hmm. Sometimes, like I've had pho where like the noodles start breaking apart. 
And you have like a bunch of broken noodles. Yes. But this is nice because it's Once that happens, the pho is over. So you have to have like the nice balance. Mm -hmm. And I like it how he has a good amount of meat with noodles. Because mm. some places it's either too much, too much noodles. It's like not balanced. And not enough meat or like too much meat and not enough noodles. Yeah. It's comforting. Mm -hmm. It's cold right now. Perfect on a day like this. Mm -hmm. Well, I think it's a nice spot in this area. Um, nice spot in this area. Where are you going to get pho around here too? Exactly. But um, I definitely think the beef pho is probably my favorite one. Like I know like the fries were good and the Chinese chicken was delicious, but I just love the comforting the like pho. feeling of mm -hmm. the pho and the broth is really good. The noodles. Like the noodles. I love how um, it really does feel like a bodega. Like there's random things that you can pick up here, like toilet paper or paper plates, and tampons, tampons, or, <laughs> or ramen noodles. Like it's a true, true bodega. Yeah. With just really good, like comforting Asian foods. Um, some with a twist, like the the pho, the the pho fries. The pho style fries are new or like interesting, right? It's interesting. Um, I would then, get it again. Yeah, I would definitely get the fries. They're killer. But really, like this, the, this is like the most comforting dish here. Yeah, the so, star. I would say it's like the star of their. Menu. Yeah, the star of the menu is the pho. Get the fire. Yes. All right, guys. I'm stuffed. Me too. Oh my gosh. We literally. <sighs> uh, it's not even. I don't even know what time it is. It's not even that late yet, but we hit. A bunch of different places four different spots in a short amount of time i will say between so aroma coffee shop it's a good coffee spot like it, these are all different places yeah. um but i love just how these are like small local businesses with exception of dom's kitchen and market i mean it's that's more of a, a higher end grocery store um it's a good concept though because nice it's concept. like a yes all in one stop yeah. Right? Yes. And you could still get, you know, you could still sit down for a little bite to eat and still do some grocery shopping. But this last stop here, Fodega, I thought was really good. Not only did we try three things, but he, the owner, gave us a free Viet dip to go because, you know, this no, is... And there's a sandwich in there too. Yeah. Ooh. Viet dip. This is the oh. Viet dip. Buy the dip. So, uh, definitely going to try gonna that try that a little bit later once, you know things settled down <laughs> um but yeah we had a really good time i hope you um enjoyed this episode and check out these local spots i think that they're really great quick eats and treats tram any last thoughts Anywhere thank you for food? inviting me what's your favorite spot i think my favorite spot was the atx bodega only because it's different um it was a good fusion between the mexican and the texas barbecue this is something I haven't solid. eaten yeah, yeah, before. Yeah, that's solid. Yeah. This spot is must try too. You guys have to come here, yeah. um, especially if you're visiting Chicago for the first time. Like, go to these local eats. They're amazing. You can get chains anywhere. Yes. Local spots are special. So on that note, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, don't forget to subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment. I love getting your comments. Um, and that's a wrap. If you like this type of content and you want to see more spots, let me know too. Thanks guys. Bye. Bye.